Hello, and thank you for tuning in. Rose Ward, StampersDelight.com. I'd like first like to say happy Good Friday and happy Passover to all my friends out there. Hop on, tell me where you're from, say hi, what you're doing this early morning, hopefully watching me. Again, Rose Ward, StampersDelight.com. So I was really excited today to do this um, shadowing technique that I'm going to show you. I actually was going to use a different technique, but I remembered this when I started playing around with it and I fell in love with it again. So hopefully you will enjoy it too. Before we get started, I would like to just um, say a couple of things other than Happy Good Friday, Happy Passover. I will be on Sunday, even though it's Easter Sunday. I, that wasn't my plan, as many of you, I'm sure, are making other plans for Easter. So I can't spend it with my family. So I decided let's spend it with my stamping family and my paper craft family. So I will be on at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time Sunday. I also want to thank all the essential workers, the frontline workers, the doctors, the nurses, uh, the grocery store workers, uh, the fire department, the police, everybody that's out on the front lines. Thank you so much for all you're doing to keep us safe. And hopefully all of us are helping you by staying home. So another thing is I want to remind you that I do have online classes. I have my monthly class with Donna Gray. So you can check that out at stampersdelight.com. Go to my blog or contact me. I'll put my email at the end of the description here. Um, also, I have uh, my monthly retreat. Well, my mini retreat, I should say. Uh, that's usually using the braided, beautifully braided. It's been an overwhelming um, success. So going forward, I'm happy to tell you that I will be doing an online class each month. Aside from the one that I do with Donna Gray, I will be doing a monthly, um, almost like a stamp club. Okay, So there will be more information coming out on that the end of April. I also uh, want to thank some people, and I'll show you those cards. Did I bring them down? Yes, I did. Uh, no, I didn't. I thought I brought my cards down. Okay, well, that'll have to be Sunday because I didn't bring the cards down that I wanted to show you. Oh, I didn't. So, okay, I'll show them to you Sunday unless I find them on my desk here. <laughs> Good morning, Yvonne. Good morning, Julie. Good morning, Jean. Good morning, Megan. Thank you all for tuning in. So let's get started. So grab your coffee, grab your tea, and come stamp with me. As you can see, my magic mug is getting kind of dark, which means my coffee's getting cold. This is part of my logo merchandise that's for sale. Not only the t-shirt, but you can get the magic mug also. I'll put that link in the bottom also when we're done. Okay, so let's get started. Again, stampersdelight.com if you'd like to order. This is my monthly code for April. Again, don't use this if your um, order is over $150 because then you want to get the um, free hostess rewards. Okay, so let me move that out of the way. So shadowing technique I played with a few years ago and I'm bringing it back because it makes gorgeous, gorgeous cards. So would you like to see some of the cards first? Okay, even though you didn't answer me. Well, you kind of did. Okay, so these are all going to be stamp sets I'm using from the annual catalog, which kind of gets... Hi, hi, Joanna. Hi, Bunny. Hi, Angie. Um, it kind of gets lost after the mini catalog comes in. Okay? So this is Healing Hugs. Now, the thing with the shadowing technique, the bigger, bolder stamps work better. I'm just going to try to zoom you in a little bit so you'll be able to see this better. So this is Healing Hugs. So first I'm going to tease you and show you a couple of cards with the healing hugs. The other thing is, here's the first one. Now this is with crumb cake. The neutral backgrounds work the best when it comes to this. And you can just see the shadowing. See the white back there, the shadowing? Yes, please share my videos. If you'd like to see more of me. Hi, Michael. If you'd like to see more of me, please share my videos. Okay, and this, just so I show you, another thing that gets lost is our corner rounder, our trio of uh, punch here. Okay. 
So that's a shadowing technique. And what I was saying is you can barely see the little white back there, which shadows it. The other one I did was with the uh, gray granite. That's the gray granite one. And of course I used the trio punch. Now I punched out this right here and then the corner rounder. So I got a different effect. I didn't show you the insides. This is a get well soon. Well, these are all get well. These two are. And this one sending healing vibes. Okay, so there's the shadowing technique for the healing hugs. The next one I used was the Butterfly Wishes, one of my absolutely favorites, okay? This was actually the last um, sample that I did. It might be my favorite. I'm not sure. Okay, so here we go with the shadowing technique. And shadowing, by the way, you'll see you're using the Pigment Whisper White. So if you don't have that, you want to get that, okay? This is black and white, all black and white. Well, black and white up here, and then I use the... Um, Smoky Slate with, of course, our beautiful black ribbon. And then another thing that you definitely want to get your hands on is our chalk marker. I love the chalk marker. And you see I just did some dots. Now, there is white behind that butterfly. And that's just the black and white and gray. And then, of course, the rhinestones are regular rhinestones colored with our black, dark black blend. And there's the inside. And this one I did put Wink Estella. I'm not sure if you can see it. There'll be still shots on my blog. The next one I did with the Butterfly Wishes, and the, the numbers will all be in the description later, is this one. So this one, again, I used Crumb Cake. I used Early Espresso. And then, of course, I used um, our Gorgeous Grape and our Pacific Point. Same idea. Let me bring it in here so you can see the white behind it. Now you could use the Stamparatus, but the the thing with the Stamparatus is you want you don't want it right on top. You want it off centered, so you can create a shadow. And of course our dotted ribbon, which I love, and this is you know our metallic ribbon. And then this one. Okay, I could have also put some Wink Estella on there if I wanted to. That would look nice. So that is the shadow effect with the Butterfly Wishes. <clears throat> okay. The one I'm going to be showing now is Beautiful Friendship. Again, in the annual catalog. And it's a, this is the first time I started using this set. And I absolutely love it as all my sets. <laughs> this is a great set. And these um, stamps work great with it too. See how they have a bold image in the middle. So let's see what we created with this one. Okay, so the first one I'm going to show you with the beautiful friendship. This one is with the smoky slate and perfect, uh, pretty peacock. And of course, some rhinestones on it. And I even, you know, even on the um, sentiments, I did the shadow background. The thing with the sentiments, the thinner the writing, the harder it is. Like this one I tried to do, and it just looked like I was drunk. Okay. So this is with the beautiful friendship. And, of course, that's with uh, the large stamp and this stamp. Then I tried this one. Hydrange, I guess it is. In the gorgeous grape. You can really see the white back there for the shadowing. I'm not seeing any comments come up, but I'm still a green light, so hopefully I'm still good. And, of course, I used the colored rhinestones. What's everybody think about these? Not sure why. Oh, there we go. Okay. You're good. Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure everybody could still see me. Then I brought in, I decided to try this, this one right here. 
and I use the Melon Mambo. You can see I'm trying different colors to see the way they look. Okay, here's the Melon Mambo. Let me bring it up real close. Okay. With the pearls. What I found, and I'll show you some other samples that I did, the more neutral backgrounds work better. The crumb cake, the gray granite, and the smoky slate. They work better. Probably your favorite? Okay. And then, of course, if you want to put some Winkostella on it, you can. This one, I did put it on the outside. You probably can't see that. Okay, so before I do the the project that I'm going to show you. Let me show you what I did with a couple of other colors. Oh, there's one of my cards. Oh, good. I found one of my cards. Okay. So this was with the uh, basic gray. And you can see that I off-centered that a little too much, but the basic gray, I mean, it looks nice. It just doesn't pop as much. The pink the pink is your favorite so the darker background I just didn't think the flowers popped as much and I also tried a uh, per, uh, pretty peacock and again of course I forgot to put the green on there I did them all in the Mary Merlot but it just didn't pop enough for me I mean if you like it that's great so yeah it would be great on the craft card bases. Yes, our Magnolia Suite with the craft card bases. So let me show you how I did that. Because I have a card that I already did that I didn't show you. And I'm going to put that one over here so I remember what I'm doing. And I'm going to bring in some different colors. Okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is bring in... <clears throat> there's my Mary Merlot. And here is my... Smoky slate. I love the smoky slate. Now, I do have a card to show you after this is over, but I'm going to change this a little bit. The first thing I'm going to do is to change this card up a little bit, and I'm going to use my trio punch. Now, when you use your trio punch, you press right in the middle of it. Sorry for the banging, and you get that cute little cutout. Again, right in the middle. I'm going to go all the way around. I know it's making the table move, sorry. Now, I could leave it just like this, or I can go back in with the corner rounder and just round those corners just to make it a little bit different. And I'm going to do that. And again, this is in the annual catalog, this punch. This is actually going to layer right on here, but I want to soften those edges too. So I'm going to go ahead and round, just round these off. I'm actually changing this card a little bit as I go. Okay, so this is going to layer right on top here. You see, it just gives it a little softened edge. Okay, so... We bring in this, and I have to grab my cleaners because I washed them yesterday, last night. <clears throat> because the ink, the pigment ink is very thick, so you definitely don't want to use your chamois. You definitely want to use your damp and scrub. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my craft ink. Now you can see some of the colors are. They, the white does get messy, but you can go ahead and put some more ink on this and then use a business card or a scrap of paper and clean it off. Okay, so I am just going to ink that up real well. I'm going to bring in my mat because it is a photopolymer stamp. And I'm going to ink that up right here. I'm not really concerned if the whole image doesn't come out because we're going to be stamping over that. I'm going to then bring in the smaller rows. I'll do it a little off-centered here. Maybe one right about here. Okay, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to do all my inking with the white first. It takes a little bit of time this to dry so the pigment ink like paint so we're good I 
didn't cover my mat either, but okay. So there's all the flowers. Then I'm going to bring in the birthday saying birthdays are the, are the best days. I'm going to do the same thing with that, but I'm going to put that right about here. Okay. Now I have to clean these off because I'm using the exact same stamps to go back in and do my shadowing. So of course I'm bringing in my stamp and scrub and I'm giving it a good scrub. Yeah, Maureen, it's not that hard at all. And it looks beautiful, doesn't it? Like I said, I haven't done this in a while and I'm racking, going through my brain here because now I want to concentrate on more techniques. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to go back in with my, <clears throat> excuse me, my Mary Merlot. I'm using Mary Merlot and I'm using Garden Green. I'm going to go ahead, ink that up. You can't see me inking it up, but trust me, I am. There's the ink. Okay. I'm going to go right back in. Now I got to move this down a little bit. I'm going to go right back in on top of that. I don't want it exactly on top because I want to create a shadow. And trust me, no matter which way you do this, it comes out gorgeous. So you can just barely see the white edging. I actually could have done that off center a little bit more. So let's do the smaller ones. And let's see, this one is this way. So I'm going to just go in here. See how you see the white? I'm going to go back in and do this one. It just creates a shadow. There we go. I'm going to go in with the leaves and the garden green. Oh, thank you, Bunny. Yeah, we tend to forget about those. And like I said, this wasn't even the one I was going to do today, so I'll have to do that one on Sunday. This one kept me awake because I couldn't wait to try it the other night when I remembered it. There I'm doing the garden green. And this is a great technique for new stampers because you don't have to line everything up. Okay. The hard part, I think, for me was the saying, because you, you want to get that shadow effect, but you also don't want it so off-centered that it looks like you're drunk. So let's see how I do, okay? Oh, yeah. Perfect. So let me bring that up close to you. Yes, I could use my grid paper. I have grid paper right here. Uh, I use this grid paper. But you're right, the Stamparatus grid paper is smaller, but I like to wrap the whole thing. Uh, what Julie's saying is to wrap this. And I, if you've seen my other videos, you know most of them are wrapped. That one was kind of dirty, so I took it off. Okay, and there you go. You see how the birthday, this is, you can see it real well right here, the shadow. Okay, so now let me bring in my card base again and the other pieces. I'm going to go ahead and layer that right here. I'm going to use my, let's see, which ribbon did I want to use? Do I want to use it? Yeah, I love this ribbon. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this ribbon, move that out of the way. I use this one for a lot of cards because it's just happens to be the right width. It's wide enough and it's thin enough to do a nice bow. So this one, I'm going to just tie a bow around here. before I you can actually do the bow around this well, maybe we'll do that let's see because I'm trying to change this one a little bit from the other one okay so I'm going to glue it down first because you'll see the other one in a minute and I want to change this up a little bit so we'll go ahead and lay that down then we'll do the bow Thank you, Linda. Now, I think I have sent out all my happy mail, mail for the last couple of weeks, 
hopefully everybody got their cards remember i'm holding off on sending um overseas or out of the country until we feel safe to go to the post office and to do it online it just doesn't come out too well to do overseas shipping online so send me your address email me your address and i will get you out one when this is all over if you're in the u.s and i haven't sent you one yet please just email me and i will send you out a happy mail card okay just so that we all stay in touch i love this ribbon and it doesn't matter which way it, i mean the one tail is up here and one is down here and that's what i love about this ribbon it looks good no matter what you do to it okay then i'm going to go ahead and take my card base now I use the thick whisper white normally for the ins for the base of my card. I think I grabbed the regular white. And this is going to layer right on here and you see just a tad of the white showing through. So let's go ahead and layer that. Oh, that's a you got international stamps coming. Hmm. I'll have to ch have to check with my postman but we don't really see him <clears throat> okay and then I'm gonna go ahead and lay that right in here and then on the inside I'm gonna use the saying I love our beautiful friendship I'll do that in Mary Merlot over here this flower almost stuck it in the green don't even have to re-ink that I'll just do it that way <clears throat> okay and then to finish it off let's see I think I'll use pearls on this one and let me get my your pick tool and I'm gonna go ahead and put some cute little pearls around this that one doesn't want to come off my finger come on there we go I get carried away with the embellishment sometimes. So that would be how to do your shadowing. And I'll bring it up close and you can see the white behind it. So easy. Now let me show you the card that I based it off of, but I changed, changed it a little bit. So here it is with the squares and no uh, trio punch there. And of course I used our epoxy glitter uh rhinestones so there's that's a little bit of a different effect and you see this one is tilted a little bit and you can see on this one a little bit more shadowing or shading do that <coughs> excuse me and that's all there is to doing the shadowing so what i thought i'd do since i haven't done this in a while is i'm going to bring in 12 by 12 piece and just show you a little bit different effect okay so I'm going to grab the butterflies for this one from the butterfly wishes and let's grab a few of those butterflies okay so let me grab some of these blocks and we need a longer one for this one Okay, do I have my early espresso? Good. Okay, so let's let's play with this one a little bit. Now, again, I haven't done any of this. And I probably won't get to finish it, but I just wanted to show you, again, how it works. And also how you can do a scrapbook page. I'm going to bring in my white. 
I'll do the top of it so you can see that. I'm going to ink this up. Let's see, I'll do one here. And again, you see that it's not real. Uh, I kind of want to do the corners. So I'll turn it. There we go. And then I'm going to go in with my butterflies. You'll see the finished one on this uh, probably tomorrow. <laughs> okay, let's just do this. Off there. Put one more maybe right here. Grab another butterfly. Okay, so that would be the top of my page. <clears throat> Go ahead and clean this off. I just want to show you some other colors. And then I'll bring them all back in so you can see them. <clears throat> so for this one, I'm going to use Early Espresso, or Soft Suede, sorry. I'm going to use Gorgeous Grape. And I'm going to use Pacific Point. So the first one I'm going to bring in is the Soft Suede, and I'm going to do the branches. The background here, again, is Smoky Slate. That's really <clears throat> giving it a nice shadow. And let's do this one over here. There we go. So there's the shadowing on those. Now I'm going to bring in, <clears throat> excuse me, Pacific Point. Now remember, I haven't tried this one other than doing it on the card. So, okay, here's the Pacific Point. Oh, look how vibrant that looks. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I love it. And then I'll bring in the gorgeous grape. Okay, so this is the start of my scrapbook page. I'm going to bring it up close so you can see those vibrant colors. Now you see this one was off a little bit, but still it doesn't matter. Look at the colors. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. I might have to do it the other side. So that's all there is to shadowing, the shadowing technique. I'm going to bring in the other cards again and show you. Let me just close up everything here. And I'm going to leave this right there. Oh, gosh, I love this. I can't wait to finish this page. What I'm going to do, and you'll see it when I'm done. Maybe I'll, I'll finish it tonight after work because I do have to get to work. I'm going to do it all the way around, okay? So it's going to go all the way around. So stay tuned for that to see how it looked all finished. So that's how you could do a quick, quick scrapbook page. Your daughter's heavenly birthday, which is so... Oh, for, you're welcome. Yes, it's not precise. It doesn't have to be precise. That's what's so great about it. It looks... And it looks great no matter what. All right, so here's the two cards again that I did. Showed you the difference on those. And then here's the pink one with, again, this is the um, beautiful friendship set. This is the Butterfly Wishes. So, you know, check out your um, stamp stash and just go for ones that are a little bit more bold so that you can ink them up and get the color. Oh, you love the technique? Thank you. Well, not that I... Th I mean, I didn't come up with it, obviously. <laughs> Here's the um, Gorgeous Grape and Heather Highland. And then we have the Peacock. Yes, it's Easter weekend, Megan, in the U.S. Today is Good Friday. Yesterday was Hol uh, Holy Thursday. Good Friday is today, Easter Sunday is obviously Sunday, but I'll be spending it with you and my husband, of course, but he'll be upstairs. <laughs>
Here's the butterfly wishes. Here's another one with the butterfly wishes. This was the black. I say black and white, but of course the smoky slate is on there too. Yes, it's Good Friday today. That's right. And this one is with the healing hugs. Now you see why I was so excited and I changed the technique that I was going to do. But now I'm thinking the technique that I gonna, I'm going to do on Sunday might not thrill you as much. But I hope it will. And this one, of course, uh, oh, that's our Venetian, is it? Our Venetian ribbon. This is all from the annual catalog. And again, another one with the healing hugs. So I will put these, let me split the camera. I will put these on my blog. I'll take still shots so that you can see them. I thank you so much for tuning in this morning. I do have to get to work, so I have to set the other tape, my other area up. Actually, it's already set up. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have a great Friday. I hope you have a great weekend. Stay in, stay safe, and I will see you all here Sunday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Have a great day, everybody. Keep on stamping. Bye.